Hey everybody, call me Felix. Today on Lolo Lito's Pinoy Kitchen, we will be cooking with a unique ingredient, Ogsa, which is the Ilocano word for dried deer. Dried deer is becoming less commonly used ingredient, especially as they are protected by law. But some kind soul gave us some oksa, and we had to make a traditional Ilocano recipe with it, which is to make it into a stew with pig's foot. And we cook the stew in two separate ways. One that's a little more simple, and then the other we cooked it in a pressure cooker in which we saved about a third of the time in cooking. Now, full disclosure, before this video, I was not convinced about deer. I did not like that oxa in that pig's foot stew. Could I be convinced this time around? Well, I guess I gave you the answer already, but watch to find out. All right, so we've added the tomatoes and the onions, and this is this uh, pig, these pig's feet and this um, dried deer have been boiling away, stewing away for about more than two hours. I would say two hours and ten <coughs> minutes. I've been timing it. And this is a very simple soup or stew recipe. All you need to do is just add some plum tomatoes, add some red onion, yeah. and then some salt. That's it, right? So it's all about the um, stewing. So this is a one pot recipe that requires very little maintenance at all. And that's the reason why dad was saying, oh, you know, what's the big deal that you have to film all every single step here? So. For sure, I will make notes of the recipe for you. So, you know, you have step-by-step -step instructions, no worries, if that's the way you roll. So, and then the other key here to boiling this stew is to boil it on low heat. And you're going to add some uh, black pepper yeah. corn. Okay, and some black pepper corn. So, very easy, salt and pepper, and then some tomatoes, onions, and of course the key ingredients are the pig's feet and the dry deer, the oxa. Now we are almost ready for uh, to eat. Yeah. So this stew is really taking shape as you can see. Yeah, as you can see the tomatoes were just wilting away into that stew. Here's that deer. I tasted a little bit of the soup. The deer meat doesn't really have a kind of overpowering um, presence as I'm used to. So I think it's a good sign. And Dad, because we had a little bit of... You put some ceiling labuyo in here, Dad? Yeah, pepper there. There it is. Dad put a little ceiling labuyo in here. Just to make things a little interesting. So this is not really part of the recipe. Um, the only thing... So, there are a few things, I think we've tried this recipe before, and I just don't think deer and pig's foot really work together. I mean, that's the, I'm still approaching that with that sort of cynicism, I guess. Uh, and then you're going to pair it with um, chip, the ceiling labuyo, which has a kind of fruity sort of bouquet sort of taste to match with deer, which is a very dominant beef jerky like flavor uh, generally it don't really go together but I'm curious to see how this turns out and you've been uh, stewing that for about Three hours, huh? Three hours and about it's three slow. hours and twenty minutes and change. Slow cooking. Yeah, slow. Yeah, slow and low cooking. Look at that. And that deer meat is like in deer strips. I think there's a little bit of uh, fat in there in that, right? That. Yeah. There's some more of that deer meat. Now to make this clear too, um, Dad did not add any tamarind in here. But he put sesame oil. But he put sesame, yeah, Dad put sesame oil in here. So technically this is not sinigang because it does, it's not a sour soup. It just kind of looks that way because of, you know, you know, tomatoes, onions and such. But 
dad prefers just not having any of the souring agent in there. Or any veggies because they're not... Oh, and the other thing is you could put um, cabbage or bok choy if you like, but um, dad says... Yeah, dad's very picky. He doesn't want to use the local quality here. He doesn't find the cabbage quality to be that good. So again, you could put some tamarind in here if you like. If you want, you can make it sour. Uh, Dad prefers not to. And then you could also put some vegetables in here in the form of cabbage or uh, bok choy. Sayote. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. You can also put sayote. Sayote or papaya, perhaps? Yeah, your choice. Eh? Yeah, but Dad, for he just says, nah, I prefer um, not putting vegetables in there. He kind of wanted to make the deer and the pork sort of stand out. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, time to eat. So after about more than three hours, almost three and a half hours of c cooking, you just over slow and low heat we have this stew look at the pig's foot here it looks gelatinous and it's fall off the look at that, how tender that is off the, bones. off the bones yeah but of course what makes it the wild card here is this deer and you can see it's a little gelatinous itself it's almost flabby as you can see let's apply some pressure there um some people don't really like the fat there and then let's get some of this uh fall off the look at the fatty piece there you go so this again is called oxa it's an ilocano dad yeah it's an ilocano term for a uh, dried deer there you go now of course we have to eat this with rice and this is kind of a good now this is a good dish, especially to warm you up, I think. And, of course, the deer, these are picked, well, pick. the deer come from, they're from the local mountains here. So, Ilocos Norte, we're in a part of Ilocos Norte where it's at the foot of the Cordillera mountain range, which kind of forms a spine, to say the least, from about central Luzon, right about where um, Nueva Ecija and Pampanga are, and then they form these mount. It's a mountainous region, stretching from Benguet or ba the city of Baguio onwards to right in our neck of the woods, um, Ilocos Norte, and it forms the boundary of to Apayao province. So this is where the deer um, come from. Okay. And we need to get a bit of um, broth in here as well. You don't want it too dry. We have to apply, of course, generously on our rice. Now, I've tried this dish before, but this is my first time to try it here in um, the Philippines. I've had it uh, based off deer that had been, you know, imported from the Philippines through like buying boxes and such. So I'm wondering, so as to how this smells, especially when you, um, before you cook it, it kind of smells like smoked gouda. It doesn't smell like smoked meat necessarily. It has that kind of twang in the air that comes out of smoked cheese. So that's the way I would describe it. There you are. That's the bite. It's plenty of deer and then plenty of pork. Let's try that out. Well, so one thing I'm going to say right off the bat is this is a more positive experience eating this dish than I've had in the past, which is from the States. What I can tell you is this has a gentler flavor profile than I thought. It has kind of like, if you've had, of course, beef jerky, this is more supple. I'm just going to try it on its own. It has a nice smoked meat flavor. That's kind of like beef jerky, but it tastes gentler. And it has kind of like a little, a semi-fatty texture, I would say. So this is, it has almost like, 
I mean, not exactly as gelatinous as this pork, for example, on my spoon. But it kind of has, yeah, I would say semi-fatty sort of uh, feel to it. And the one thing that really bothered me before about the Oksa pig's foot dish was how much the Oksa permeates through the pork. And to me, that was really off-putting before. But this does not. This does not overpower in the least bit. It's very gentle, nice, rounded, smoked meat flavor. That's, that's the way I would describe it. I'm thinking kind of like a more subtle beef jerky that's a little more supple, a little um, gentler in the flavor profile. It's not as gamey, in your, in your face gamey as I remember it. So I think, I would say I'm a little surprised that this one is more, more gentler. Mm, this is a dish that I actually like now. It almost has a smoked ham taste. Almost like smoked Christmas ham, doesn't it? Mm. Like smoked Christmas ham. Now, um, let me try some of that soup. Because I want to taste how much that has permeated into the broth itself. Mm. <laughs> Just a little bit of the smoked meat taste. There's not, it's not gamey really. It, it, the deer is almost like, it knows its place practically in this dish. And that was kind of my fear with, when we got this oksa and like, it was given, I'm like, um, maybe I won't find this as appetizing, but this, this I really like. It really does taste like smoked Christmas ham Sort of tastes a little bit like beef jerky. Yeah. I mean, the mouthfeel I don't find disturbing either. I mean, it just feels luscious in all the right ways. So even if there's a little skin, it doesn't feel like it's gloopy or um, like like Vaseline gel. That was what I was thinking, but it doesn't. It doesn't. It's it, it's nice texture. Um. If you're wondering that Siling Labuyo didn't really lend any spice, and old dad being very sensitive to any type of spice, he thought, oh, or the power of suggestion kind of compelled him to think that it tasted a little spicy. It does not. But I, you know, prefer preferably I would not want to put any real, like, strong chili flavor to this because it's a gentle flavor. You want to have the pork taste on its own, which it does here, and it's perfect. I wouldn't have known it. With just a slight round, you know, a slight rounding taste with a little bit of that smoked ham taste of that dry deer or oksa. Who would have thought? Um, now, we could get one of these. Um, so, one of these uh, days, I'll show you how dad makes this. This is what's called adobo um, sili or pepper adobo. And it's just cooked with um, vinegar and ginger and so on. So this you can add to give a little heat that's not too, you know, crazy like our ceiling labuyo. And it doesn't give as much uh, fruitiness and such. It will give you nice, lend a nice uh, green smoky flavor, if that makes any sense. And it will add a little bit of a vinegary spiciness, which I think will liven up this dish some more. There you go. Using like these long sweet green chilies, what they call long sweet green chilies, especially the waxy type, that lend a little more punch, but they're a little more acidic. So it brightens up that dish. And it's perfect with any meat dish, really. This, this, um, adobong sili. So yeah, this is, I mean, to be honest, I was kind of dreading this because again, I'm uh, really worried about the overpowering gaminess of that meat. And, um, you know me, I've eaten goat on this channel and I've raved about it before. You know, I, I don't mind like the gamey, just a slight gaminess here, here and there. But when it came to this deer, I just was, um, no, I'm not having it. But I will say now, it's at the perfect age, I think. And the texture, I really like it. It does. It's not like Vaseline sort of, you know, texture out of that skin. It's just... Mm, mm, 
supple in the right ways, a little bit pliable, um, a little bit firm, but not too much. But the big thing for me is that it's not overpowering. It just gives a nice smoky taste, the nice, well-rounded smoky taste. And, it, and then with this ham hock here, or the pig's foot, you can use ham hock or pig's foot, is it will lend a little bit of smokiness to the thing. So as if that the ham hock or the pig's foot itself had gotten the smoke treatment too. The pig's foot uh, and deer recipe is different here. It's just it's actually the same recipe. It's just that it's been upgraded with some gabi and um, taro root. So this is extra hardy. This is the fully upgraded pig's foot and deer stew, and you can see chunks of that deer. Mmm, super fatty. Okay. Alright, take two of the pig's foot in deer stew, dry deer stew. And of course, like I said, it's been upgraded with some gabi and some taro root. So this is going to be a heartier dish. Thank you for the lunch, Mano. There's some. No problem. I Thank you that. Mom. Okay, now that that chime's done, yeah. I'm going to pick some of that chunky deer with my chunky pork. And we need to get some of the veggies there. So this is going to taste really hearty, I think. There, and that, of course, he put some ceiling of bouillon, I think, it's been added. And well, now, this is a little different, not just because of what's in it, but also because this has been cooked in a pressure cooker. So, if you're short on time, by all means, use a pressure cooker. This one cooked in about, uh, two hours. Two hours. <laughs> How tender that pork is. Some of that gobby. Thank you. That's like melting your mouth good. So, of course, I have JP here. He's gonna. <laughs> JP's here. So he can um, try out this recipe. And I said it's. Pretty I've never tried good. this before. Let's see if it's. Um, he said he's never tried it. I haven't tried the deer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm assuming it's like beef jerky. Yeah. But I don't think so. It's got a little. All right, let me. Do, oh, we'll see what, how it goes. Okay, let's see. Oh, I can taste the chili la bouillon. Oh yeah, in the in the soup. Mmm. Yeah. We got ham. It really does taste like smoked ham. It does. That's ham. weird. That is really weird. Wow. It's actually pretty awesome. I guess I'll just grab with my own spoon. Yeah, good. The soup. So if you want a little bit of spice and a little bit of savoriness, let's we're gonna add. A little bit of um, fish sauce and seeing the bouillon. Let's add a little bit of something on that nice chunk of piece of pork. A little bit of fish sauce, a little bit of chili. Yeah, it's oh really nice. And some of that gabi as well. Find some more to deludo or taro stem. That's a taro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a really hearty dish. And even better with the taro stems and such. So, like I said, so we made two different types of this dish. Um, one we just cooked downstairs. Well, I just going to say downstairs. Um, one we just cooked simply like Dad did. And then up here, our second take, we cook it with some gabi, some taro root, and in a pressure cooker because we were short on time, which you can do. It will reduce the cooking time by one hour. Instead, so two hours instead of three with a pressure cooker. And it's even better, in my opinion. 
So, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. And better yet, subscribe as we have a lot more food and travel videos coming up. So, bye for now. I'm trying to ever earn them. <laughs>